Will there be pets what in heaven? Are, are we in the end times? Uh, what are current beliefs like most new and accurate God God been and since and how uh, grow in this Jesus area. proclaimed it. Hello, and welcome back to Now That'll Preach. My name is Jared Crowley. I'm your host. I'm sitting with my good friend and pastor, David Freck, lead pastor of Church of the Harvest. Mm -hmm. And uh, That'll Preach basically is a resource that we put on here uh, that's intended to grow you in your relationship with God. Uh, and the way that we do that is basically by taking your questions, your topics, so to any kind of thing you want to hear a little sermonette on uh, and throwing it on at this guy uh, with no preparation whatsoever, mm -hmm. no... Uh, no kind of hints about what we're going to talk about or anything like that. No. And uh, we just ask him kind of on the spot to either answer the question or just kind of preach a little bit about um, the subject that we're talking about. Yeah. So really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like I said, we do view it as a resource. So liking, sharing, subscribing, all those things that kind of help get it out there. Uh, we'd really appreciate that. But uh, let's get into it. Yep. That's all true. right. So um, this one's kind of a, a complicated question, and they had um, a scriptural reference with it. So I'll just kind of read that. Uh, it's 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, verses 13 through 18. I think I'm just going to read 13 through 15, though. Um, so it says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be, about, uh, be, to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Mm -hmm. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Right. Um, and I actually think that's all the context we need. Basically, they were asking some clarity about the idea of someone being asleep with Jesus uh, and that not equating to death and it being, you know, they're basically wanting some more context on that. And they're wondering like, are we immediately with God in spirit when we die? Or is there a period of, you know, rest yeah. that it's talking about there? Um, yeah. So the, the idea of rest is the Catholic idea of purgatory. Okay. Uh, and this, the answer to that biblically uh -huh. is uh, you're in the presence of God. Okay. And in his presence is rest. Sure. Uh, so they're one and the same. <laughs> yeah. And, and so uh, to be out of this body is to be present with the Lord mm. based on the power of resurrection, based on the covenant of restoration sure. and redemption. So you, you don't like go into a waiting period or yeah, yeah. this um, blank consciousness state. You literally leave this conscious world and you enter the conscious world of heaven presence of God, the throne room. So that's, gotcha. that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So this idea of sleep, um, and once again, it's a translation and it's a gentle way. You got to realize that most uh, traditional Jewish people back in that day mm -hmm. uh, had no hope of heaven mm. and didn't have it built into the context of their consciousness. Yeah, That was just a place where God resided. Mm. That was not a place for them. Wow. And so, and so they understood uh, that, that that's why they, you know, resurrection was important. Right, right. Because that the Messiah would come, he'd establish a new world order, and they'd be resurrected in that and through that, and because of that, they'd live an, a, an eternal life mm -hmm. in this earth right, right. that God created. And uh, so the Pharisees were fair, you see, because they believed that. Mm -hmm. And the, the Sadducees were sad, you see, because they didn't believe that. Oh, okay, gotcha. They believed once you died, you were done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, so it was about, a, you know, so their idea of following God was about creating legacy covenant mm. for a better quality of life. Okay. Not necessarily for an eternal life. Interesting, yeah. So the issue of sleep He's talking to Thessalonians, which are Greek mm -hmm. uh, believers, Greek and Hebrew believers that are in Thessalonica. Sure, yeah. Uh, it's a Greek state, it's a colony, so it's not, uh, there's some Jewish believers there, but it's not a, it, it's primarily Romans and sure. Greeks. And, and so he's still dealing with the idea, well, you know, there's nothing after this. Mm -hmm unless there's a resurrection. Of course, the resurrection, Jesus was resurrected, therefore we're resurrected. Right, right. But then, well, what about until that day? Mm -hmm. And so that, that's what he's answering. Okay, gotcha. And so the question was, well, because they're talking about his second coming mm -hmm. and the dead in Christ rising, and that's where he's going with this, the dead in yeah. Christ arise, and we which are alive remain, will be caught up together with them in the air. So the picture ultimately becomes, now he's talking about resurrection. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that happen? So your body's in the grave, 
at whatever state it is. Yeah. Could be freshly buried or it could be dust. Sure. Right? Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever the context mm -hmm. of that place is. Your spirit is in heaven with God. Yeah. And with Christ. So in the context of the second coming, uh -huh. what happens is our spirits return with the Lord, and at the shout, uh -huh. our spirits then go to the place where our dead body has been uh -huh. placed. Our glorified body is activated. Mm -hmm. And then they, those who are dead in Christ rise first. They come out of the grave, and then when they reach where we are, mm -hmm. we which are alive remain, are caught up with them, and together we go to meet the Lord in the air. Wow. So that's, that's pretty the, wild. That's yeah. the description of the second coming, sure. and specifically the rapture. Yeah. What yeah. we what we now call the rapture. Right. And so um, I don't know if I'm helping yeah, answer yeah. the question mm -hmm. outside of yes, you're in heaven, right. and the explanation of the, the resurrection from the dead. Uh -huh specifically, yeah. is that event where your spirit then returns, reclaims yeah, sure. your body. So in salvation, you are saved, mm -hmm. which is what your spirit um, your spirit experiences. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, your, uh, your spirit is saved, your soul is being saved, mm -hmm. and your body will be saved. Okay. Because redemption is about the total reclaiming of God's original intention for created man. Yeah. Right. And he created man, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. So your spirit is saved once you get saved. Mm -hmm. Your soul is being saved. That's the part that's you're dealing with every day, yeah. conforming to the will of God, so on and so forth. Sure. And your body will be saved. Now, you all know your body, my body, is going to eventually die. Right, right. Uh, unless the rapture happens. Yeah. My body's going to eventually die. Mm -hmm. Well, does God, well, okay, good riddance. It's corrupt. Well, your body was designed to live forever. Yeah. Originally. Sure. Until sin entered. Right, right. So, so God's going to reclaim your body. Yeah. It's all going to be reclaimed in the work of Christ. Yeah. But the, the body's the last thing to be reclaimed through the power of salvation. Sure, yeah. So that gives you maybe a general Yeah, for sure. I mean, so, idea. yeah, the most interesting part to me, I guess, that, like, I had never thought about or connected the dots on is, like, I always just thought once you get to heaven, you automatically, like, that's when you experience your reclaimed body. Well, you're, you're glorified. You're seen in a glorified uh -huh. way. Yeah. Right? You're, the Bible says you'll be known as you are known. Mm -hmm. so, so, for instance, when I get to heaven, I'm not going to have to go up and, and uh, figure out who's there. Mm -hmm. sure. I'll know everybody there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I'll know people I never met in this natural world. Mm -hmm. I'll know Peter, I'll know Paul, I'll know, I'll know, I'll know, I'll know, yeah. I'll know them all. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll have, I'll be known as I am known. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no strangers there. Yeah. We're all a part of that same collective family. Mm -hmm. There's this, all those barriers are broken. Yeah. And immediate knowledge, immediate clarity, immediate association is there, mm -hmm. immediate. So, so this idea of um, being in the presence of God is yes, you're in a glorified state, mm -hmm. but it is your it's a spiritual state. Okay. Yeah. And when your body's reclaimed, it's not natural. It's just like Jesus' glorified body. Sure. Yeah. Right. Jesus' glorified body is in heaven right now. Mm -hmm. His is the only glorified body in heaven. Wow, that's wild to think about. Right now. Yeah, right. That's super cool to think about. Yeah. He, so everybody's looking at him. Uh -huh. And seeing and knowing that that will be true for them. Mm. So there's still promise in heaven. Yeah. It's so cool. Like, yeah, I guess that was the follow-up question I was about to ask, and you just kind of answered it. But, like, yeah, there's a difference in the heaven that we're going to, ex like, experience pre-rapture versus post-rapture, which is Absolutely. so interesting to me. Like, I don't think... I don't think that's a common thing to think about if you're not like a theologian or went to Bible school or right. something like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think people just think of heaven as heaven, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and we don't have all the answers. Sure. And the Bible doesn't yeah. give us all the answers. Right. But it gives us enough to have a sense of it. Sure. You know, to have a sense of, you know, our state today. Mm -hmm. Just like there was, a, there was a, uh, a state, heaven was in one state prior to the cross and sure. the resurrection of Jesus. Yeah. There was, there was Sheol and Hades, mm -hmm. which had a different role prior to the resurrection. Mm -hmm. 
and now has a completely different role after the resurrection of Jesus. Mm -hmm. When Jesus went into hell, went into Hades, mm -hmm. and took the keys of hell mm -hmm. and death, well, why do you have to take the keys? Yeah. Because people, there were people being held mm -hmm. because there was no access to heaven yeah. prior to the cross and the resurrection. Right. You died in faith. Yeah. And that's why the Bible says in, in uh, Ephesians that he led captivity captive and yeah, he gave sure. gifts unto men. Right. And, and so this idea that they were captive, but then he went down into the lower parts of the earth and he led them, he led the captives who were captive, he took them under his control, he broke the powers of death mm. and hell, mm -hmm. Hades, and he brought them into his glory. Yeah, right. And the Bible says that even at the resurrection of Jesus, 500 were resurrected, or that many graves were broken, mm. and many were resurrected with him. Mm. So can you imagine that when Jesus was resurrected, that same day, there were other resurrected people walking wow. through Jerusalem? <laughs> That's so wild. So <clears throat> I, I, I made the statement that, that um, glorified bodies, Jesus was the only one. Mm -hmm. But if that resurrection happened with those people, then those glorified bodies so are there be, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So I, I forgot about that. Sure, moment. yeah. But yeah, so it's kind of cool that is really when you cool. kind of start threading it together. Yeah. So heaven goes mm -hmm. through iteration, hell went through iteration, mm -hmm. the earth is going through iteration, yeah. uh, our bodies are going to go through iteration, right, right. everything's going to go through iteration. Yeah. Yeah, that's so wild. Based man. on how it's moving in its place in, right. in, in time, in the yeah. chronology of time. Right, right. Yeah, that's so cool, man. It's a, Again, like it's just it's something I don't... I've never really thought about and I don't think a lot of people mm -hmm. do and like that's why I was really intrigued by this question because when I was reading that like I've read Thessalonians a bunch of times and never thought of like you know you just skip past things or it becomes like or if you don't know it you just kind of like oh I don't I don't understand this so I'll just move on yeah exactly or it just like yeah like what you said at the beginning where it's like well the presence of God is rest so if you're in his presence you're always going to experience rest I think that's how I always thought about it but then when you dive deeper into it mm -hmm. there's all these things surrounding it that completely change the way you even think about like what we're going through now and god's kind of big picture plan for things you know <laughs> yeah, like yeah exactly. yeah it's super cool well um appreciate your insight appreciate yeah. your perspective My as pleasure. always man I'm enjoying these yeah. questions yeah <laughs> a lot more fun than some of the ones we had last time i'm imagining <laughs> but uh we appreciate you guys as always thank you so much for sending in your questions your topics and uh we will see you next week all right